Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on the Realtrack Performance ERP software. Uh, we're here today to talk about the uh, new feature that we've recently added called the Open Job Status Interface. Uh, and we'll also talk about a couple other features that you may not be aware of uh, while we're discussing it. So, uh, the Open Job Status Interface is going to look a little similar to the List Job screen, which you're probably familiar with if you're an re existing Realtrack customer. Uh, this is our existing List Job screen, which is kind of the gateway into looking at individual jobs. It lists all of our jobs. You can uh, just do Open or Include, Close, and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, the Open Job a Status screen is actually more intended uh, for shop floor managers or production managers. We got some feedback from some of our customers that they uh, on the shop floor were using this screen to try to manage uh, where jobs were uh, using the location filter uh, primarily to determine you know where things are currently at. I want to know what sort of uh, jobs are currently waiting at my saw or sitting at my saw station. Uh, but some of the production floor people wanted uh, additional information that we kind of weren't showing uh, here on this screen. So we first mocked it up as an Excel interface and tested it out with some customers of ours. Got some feedback and we've kind of codified it now into a real feature in the product. Uh, this is a feature that's going to be included uh, with all versions of the product. Uh, and there's no other modules or anything. So the next time we update your software, uh, you can pop over here into the toolbox and see if you have this open job status uh, selection. That's going to pop us into the new feature. So right away you'll probably notice uh, we've got a big image here, which we can even make bigger if we so choose, showing the primary image for the part that we're producing. Uh, we'll talk a little, little bit more about that more later if you're not familiar with how to set a primary image, uh, what it is, how it gets set automatically, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, but for right now you can see that uh, we've got a list of 28 open jobs that are in our system. Uh, we see the primary image of it, the job information. Uh, similar to the list job screen, we have several, several columns in, in common. Uh, we've got our on time value here, so how far away we are, how far ahead or behind we are in terms of our, our production. Um, and similar to the list job screen as well, we can sort these by any clicking on any of these column headers. So if we wanted to sort them by uh, reverse on time, so we know which ones are furthest ahead, which ones are the worst and most behind. Uh, we have that option. And of course we can always filter. So if I want to know the sorted by on time and I want to just know Pete's um, jobs, I can always filter for our sales rep Pete and see where we're at with uh, just their jobs for that salesperson. Uh, we have a clear button up here if we want to clear the uh, search criteria and just reset back to look at all of our parts and jobs. So the one really cool thing that uh, a lot of our shop floor managers wanted and needed was the ability to uh, see not only the current location like we can on the uh, list job screen, but also the follow-up steps. So if we find a job here, I was looking, I think it's 1648 earlier. Let's scroll down there. Oh, 1649. That's the number that we're curious about. So we've got a job building some stuff here, some trick wheels. It's got some parts and photos. But kind of the cool thing to look at here as I scroll over is we currently see it sitting at the saw station. Uh, but from this view, we also can see where it's going next. So these are the next operations after the current operation that is queued or queued active, if you will. Uh, so after our uh, trick wheels here go to the saw, we're expecting them to head over onto a two-day service work center and then finally go end up at our assembly work center. Uh, you'll also notice if we kind of scroll through these, a lot of these have dates. So you may ask, what does that date signify? What does that mean? And that's actually the date that we're expecting the job to hit the work center in question. Um, so if I can scroll through one here to find something kind of interesting here, if we look at job 1661 in row number eight, uh, we can see it's currently at processing. So they're probably somebody's ordering some material or preparing some material for it. After we go to processing, we can see here two days from now, it's, I'm recording this on May 1st, we're expecting it to hit the saw center, uh, where it's going to stay for a couple days and get its saw on. Uh, and then it's going to pop over to the deburr, where we're going to spend a couple days, and then finally end up at the paint. And it continues on. But you can kind of see we're using the power of the real track schedule uh, to kind of give you this information right here in this cool display. So looking right at this, we can kind of plan out the future steps and see where our load's going to be on specific days. So really cool little tool. Uh, hopefully something that will find value in your uh, business, in your manufacturing facility. 
Uh, let's just take a look at this primary image and, and talk about that for a real brief second. So I'm going to open up this job 1649 real quick uh, and take a look at it. So hang on for one second for me if you'd be so kind. Let's pull that open and search for our job 1649. Double click on this baby and open it up. So if we take a look at this job, uh, we can see we've got two images down here that are attached to it. Uh, I'm going to hover over them for a second and kind of describe what we're seeing. Uh, when we hover, we get two things that kind of pop up. Below, we get an information box that kind of gives us some textual information. And then upper left here, we also get a bigger version of our thumbnail with some additional information as well. Uh, so let's just look at the lower box first. Uh, we get the name of the file, uh, what type of file it is. So the Realtrack has correctly identified that this is an image based on the file extension. What's real important is the association. We see that right there it says that it's a drawing. Let me hover over again so we can get our tooltip up. We can see this is a drawing. So whenever you add an object to the file attachment, uh, we'll ask you to classify what the association is. Uh, the key thing to remember is that um, if we say it's either a drawing or a part, if you give me one second we can pop over here, uh, you'll notice this image, which is kind of more of a picture of our finished good, uh, the association is part. So we've got a drawing and a part. If we choose those options when we attach uh, a file, it's going to be actually be attached to the part, not to the job. This means that any time we make this part in any future jobs, uh, everything that's flagged either as a part or a drawing is going to come with it automatically. The same is true if we decide to make an estimate for this part in the future as well. We'll see the drawings and the parts because it's attached to the part, and that's what we're estimating, and that's what we're building. Uh, if we go into our system and drag something in there that's maybe like a purchase order specific to this job, or I'll just drag a random document on here uh, for fun. Um, so if we drag a file on, and then we say it's reference to a PO, or it's a description of our job, or it's a reference to the job, that's going to apply just to this job. So let's just do that real quick. So we don't know what this type of image is. We can't create a, a thumbnail for it, but that's fine. So the first time we either attach a drawing or a part to our job here, that will become the primary image. So right now, the primary image for um, this part right here, which is attached to the job, is this drawing right here of our uh, thing that we're producing. Uh, for some reason, I may want to switch it over and take a look and make the primary image the um, completed image part here. I can do that. Uh, if I right click on the secondary part, I can choose to set it as a primary. So the very first drawing or part that you attach to a job, it's going to make that the primary image by default. So just by the sheer fact that I added the drawing here on 10-8-2015 means that it's by default going to be the primary image. But I want to switch it over and take a look at uh, the actual part, finished part as opposed to the drawing for whatever reason. So I'm going to right click and set that as the primary. You'll note we switch it over to the left even to try to give just a visual indicator. Whatever you see on the far left, if it's a drawing or a part image, um, that's going to be our primary image. So if we take a second now and pop back open into our open job status screen, when I take a look at 1649, we'll see the other image now, the actual uh, part image and not the drawing. So that's just one thing that maybe some of, not all of our customers were kind of aware of and the reasoning behind it, how the default uh, first is selected and how to switch between the two. Um, Speaking of these primary images, we've also added a cool new report recently that maybe not everybody's familiar with. I know a lot of our shops uh, have a job book, so when they get a job in, as they're launching it out onto the floor, they'll make you know a binder of some sort that will have the router, uh, purchased material information on that, any other specifications, and that kind of floats around with the job as it goes around your facility. So we ended up making a new report that is kind of the cover sheet for uh, those sort of binders. And it actually uses this default part image. So it's kind of a cool thing and not something we had done before. So let's just take a look at that as well because this has been released in the past few, uh, his recent history as well. So let's pop into this reports button. I'm going to unselect our default report. If you go down here to the bottom, you'll see you have a job cover sheet report. So we click the preview to check this out just to show you an idea of what we're talking about. So we get our job number up at the top along with the description of the part and all that sort of good stuff. We've also downloaded the image from our server and plopped it right here onto the report, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got information on the customer that we're building it for below. And we also uh, put a strip here uh, 
uh, vertically as well. So if you end up wanting to, if you really do put this into, say, a three-ring binder, uh, you can just strip this, cut this strip off, put it in the side of the binder, and then put the main body right in the front of your binder. And you've got a pretty cool cover sheet uh, for your job as it's floating around your facility. Everybody sees your default part. We know who, which customer it's for. Uh, we've got some good traceability. And you've got consistency uh, in every uh, report and cover job book that goes out there. We've got all this information and we can know that we're meeting the specifications for what needs to be out there on the um, job report. So of course, this uh, report could always be customized if you so choose, if you wanted to add other information uh, in terms of the customer's PO number or anything along those lines. We've got 30 or 40 different fields that you can choose to add to this report if you want. This is kind of just the default of how it lurks, but pretty cool stuff and uh, something new, of course, as well, just always improving the software. So when you next time we get an update at your site, please pop in and check out the open job status screen. Let us know what you think. Uh, it's got some cool little features in there. We're constantly improving it. In fact, we've got a version in our labs now where you're able to search based upon these locations as well. So by the time you actually try to use this feature, you may have some additional search fields in this interface as well. Uh, this request came from a customer of ours. Uh, so we worked with them and, as I mentioned, mocked it up and uh, then have shipped it out. So please, as always, if you have anything that uh, could be done to help you win the business race, let your sales rep know. Let uh, Realtrack know in some manner. Uh, we'll get to work on it and try to make you a happy customer. So thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Let us know what you think and have a good day.